Welcome back. This is episode number four of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist in the description. And let's get started. From this tutorial and going forward, you are going to learn how to use and program the GPIOs of your Raspberry Pi board. Using GPIOs is a great way to make your Raspberry Pi control simple hardware components like LEDs and push buttons. And to be able to create a hardware circuits with Raspberry Pi, you have to know just a bit about breadboards and resistors. That's what I will explain in this video. First of all, let's see how to use a breadboard. A breadboard is very useful. You will use it to connect multiple components together and with your Raspberry Pi GPIOs. You can plug some wires, resistors, LEDs, well, anything you want, basically, on a breadboard. What you need to know is that underneath the surface, there are some metal lines that make connections between the components. A component that you plug on a line is electrically connected to all of the other components on that line. And here is a representation of the connections, okay, in a breadboard. As you can see here, we have, so we have two main lines, okay, on each side of the breadboard. Okay, you have a blue line and a red line. Okay, just, those are just colors okay, that are used to indicate that the blue line is for the ground. Okay, this is the minus line. And the plus line in red is for the power supply. Okay, so you will have ground and power supply. Everything in that line is connected. Okay, so whether you plug it here or here or here, it's the same. And it's also valid for the plus line. Everything on that line is connected with all of the other points. And then here you have different points, but those points are connected, as you can see, in that way. So usually you will have five okay, different points, plugs, where you can just plug any uh, component. And whether you plug it here, 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 or here, this is the same point. Okay, All of the components plug here will be plugged to the same point. So you have multiple lines or columns here, okay, and each one is independent. So if you want to plug two components to the same point, then you put them in the same uh, column here. If you want to make them separate, make sure to use a different column. And some of the boards, you will only have half of that. Okay, You maybe have only the A section plus the B section, and some of the boards, like the one I use, we have twice this section here, okay, in symmetry right here. So this is the same as this, and the D part is the same as the A part. So as you can see on the breadboard I have, I can find here the plus sign and the minus sign, okay? So you can see the plus sign, we have the red line. So every dot, okay, on this line, so all the dots on this line are connected to get and then you have the minus line which is the blue line so every dot on that line are connected together okay in the image i showed you the plus was on the inside and the minus was on the outside but here it's inverted but actually that really doesn't matter okay it's just two lines that are connected together okay and you will use the plus for power and the minus for ground now here you can see i have a, B, C, D, E, and I have some numbers here, 1, 2, 60. So those are actually lines that are connected like that. So every, for example, line 1, you have A, B, C, D, E, all of the dots A, B, C, D, E are connected together. Then line 2, which is independent, you have all of those five dots connected together, okay? And that multiplied by 60-something times, okay? And you have the exact same here, okay? The five dots here are connected, etc., etc., and you also have a plus and minus line. Depending on your board, you may only have this side, okay, of the board, which is totally okay. In fact, I could, you can see, I could just break it here, or it's modular, so I could, I could change the the way. Uh, it is, and um, you can also have a shorter board, for example, half this side. Okay, but the important is just that you find the different dots and which dot is connected to which. 
To make an LED blink, for example, we will need an LED, some wires, but also one resistor. The resistor is here to lower the amount of current that goes through the LEDs and it's also helping to protect the GPIOs so they don't get burned with too much current. So now, how to recognize a resistor? Maybe the resistors are correctly set per value in the kit you have, but if it's not the case, you will have to read the value from the color bands of the resistors. Here is a table to help you find the value of a resistor with the colors on it. Usually you will see four bands or five bands resistors. The first two or three bands correspond to a number. The next number corresponds to the multiplier, for example, multiply by 1, 10, 100, 1 kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohm, etc. And finally, the last band is for the tolerance or the precision of the resistor. For what we'll do in this course, you will not need to worry about the tolerance, any value will do. So, the first resistor we are going to use is the 1 kilo ohm resistor. 1 kilo or 1000, okay? So you can see with a 4-band resistor, you should have brown and then black, which means 1 and 0, okay, that will make 10, and then multiply by 100 ohm, which is the red color. So 10 multiplies 100 is 1000 ohm. And then the tolerance, uh, you don't need to worry about that, any color will do. And if you have a 5-band resistor, you should have first the brown and then the black and then black which will make 100 okay and the multiplier will be brown so it will be 100 multiplied by 10 which makes also 1000 okay so you have two ways of computing 1000 here with the four band and the five band resistor and the second resistor we're going to use is the 10 kilo ohm resistor so for the 10 kilo ohm you will have either a 4-band resistor with brown and black, okay, just like before, but then the multiplier will not be red, the multiplier will be orange, okay, orange for 1,000, okay, so 10 times 1,000 makes 10 kilo ohm. And if you have a 5-band resistor, then instead of a multiplier which is brown here with a 10 ohm, the multiplier will be red with 100 ohm. So you still have brown, black, and black for 100, and then you multiply 100 by 100, which makes 10,000. So that are the two resistors you have to find in your kit. If you don't find one kilo ohm resistors, you can pick a lower value, for example, 330 ohm or 400. 70 ohm okay so you can use the uh, table on the left to compute that value however i would not recommend going below 330 ohms for the leds okay one kilo ohm is in fact a pretty high value for an led with the raspberry pi we could use a lower value but it's a nice value if you want to connect many leds so the total current consumptions will not be too high and will not go beyond the raspberry pi's limit which is 50 milliampere. So make sure that if you use a lower value resistor, you don't connect too many LEDs. For example, you don't connect 15 LEDs with low resistors. And then for the 10 kilo ohm, if you don't have 10 kilo ohm, uh, you could guess with a lower value as well. I would not recommend going below 2 kilo ohms for that. And you can use also a higher value, but don't go too far. And basically, to connect components such as LEDs, the higher the resistor's value, the less current you will take, and thus you can plug more LEDs to your circuit while staying safe. All right, now that you have the color code for the resistors you have to find, find them in your kit, and after that, let's build that first circuit with an LED. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.